All right, welcome to this episode of uh, the Stampscapes Lab. We're going to try to utilize one of uh, Deanna Tubsidio's fantastic uh, background papers in a uh, piece right here. And what we have is the sun um, kind of spotlight in a certain area of this, um, I don't know, uh, land base down here, uh, presumably. And what I want to do is I want to utilize this um, spotlighting um, for some sort of dramatic scenario. Okay, now the ideal thing for me would just be to utilize um, my Lakeside Cove right over the top of that, but I don't want to use that stamp for everything. But going with something that has a little bit of a, a darker dominant type of silhouetted, um, I don't know, whatever rendering style would be better for this. But I am going to try some kind of open designs like this. Now see this area in here is light and I have a lot of tonal gradation right in here with the spotlit tops of these tufts right here. But of course, if you stamp them over something that is darker than white, um, they're gonna stamp out dark, okay? So I don't, this is just kind of read more as kind of like a texture. Okay, now I'm gonna work this um, scenario around this um, this horse right here. So I want this to look like it's the, like the edge of a pond, but I also am going to bring in some larger trees in here that are gonna dominate uh, the composition in here. And for coloring, I have some colors that are roughly the same types of hue that are already in this scene right here. So in colored pencils, we have the greens and brown and black. And then in the acrylic paint pens, I have this type of um, coloring scheme. Now I don't need to go with the dark green um, because I'm going to be utilizing these ones more for highlights, okay? All right, so this is just all kind of in theory here. This is um, kind of working around such a, like a dominant specific background like this one. It's not just like a general pattern or something like that. Um, it makes you kind of think a little bit because you have to work around your existing, whatever, tonal, lighting, color, temperature, all those parameters are already established and we're working within that structuring. So it's pretty fun to, oh, I don't know, I, I guess throw in a little bit of a an extra, or several extra considerations when approaching a scene. So it's a different way to work um, and it's pretty fun, but um, it really does make you think on different ways to use your given visuals, but also how to kind of maximize them. All right, so I I don't know um, myself. <laughs> you know? So that's why I'm going to give this a try here and see how it comes out. Now I, I can, you know, I'm going to fall back into um, some standard um, practices that I always do with shading and value and highlighting and all that type of thing, atmosphere. But I all I am working around, you know, this, um, like I said, these kind of existing parameters, which, um, you know, something that I'm not normally having to do with too many things. Even my sky photos are a little bit more generic because, you know, it doesn't have such a, a strong focal point with, um, you know, huge value range in there from lights to darks. So yeah, we have something very light white to completely black in there. That being said, in theory, um, this piece should or could go pretty fast. So it's a pretty fun way to come up with, you know, some kind of dynamic um, scenarios um, very quickly. Okay, so I have um, some grasses established like this. Now there's a little bit of this waterway down here. Um, for me, I'm using my um, hybrid black ink they do have these pre-printed background papers. So um, if there's a certain side that you're gonna use over the other one, what you wanna do is you wanna practice and do a couple test prints using uh, your different black inks to see which ones give you the best impressions on this type of paper. So, and then, I don't know, they're printed on the back here so that if um, something goes, um, you know, not the way you wanted it to go or whatever, 
on the front of it, then you can use the back. But I, you know, I, the you know the biggest thing is the front of them, so you're going to be using that. So I would just do some test prints, at least on one of these um, pages on the back, so that you can, again, if you haven't used it before, just so you get the gist of, uh, you know, your different inks. You want your, you want good deep impressions um, on this type of paper right here, um, just so it stands out um, really nice and dark. Okay, so this horse, let's put that horse right here. I can have it in the water, or you can have it just right on the edge, you know, where the reflection's in the water. Um, this horse is facing this way, so when something's coming down like this, if I have it in the spotlight, I, I like to have it facing into the scene as opposed to out, okay? It keeps the, the visual movement of a scene contained within the piece. You don't want it kind of dragging someone off the page, okay? All right, so we have that horse right there. Good deep, dark impressions. All right, now I'm gonna put a couple trees in here, all right? And this one's going to be like something that's coming off the page and it's um, kind of in the foreground, uh, very prominent. Maybe I'll go a little bit off to the side so we can showcase more of these really great um, lighting patterns that are already in the scene. Okay, winter ash, um, large here. I want to ink up a good portion of it, even though I'm just stamping, I don't know, maybe half or three quarter. But I'm going to have some of it going up into that sun area. If you have something, that sun area is kind of a, it's a softer light, okay? glowing it's a softer glowing light so if we put something hard and dark right next to it by contrast it should in theory make that you know all those qualities of that area even more so it'll if it's a if it's a um complementary um texture and value so in other words warm glowing and soft against something sharp and dark, you know, crisp and dark, I should say. Okay, now if you notice, I'm kind of holding this down a little bit longer because these are pre-printed papers and you have that printer's ink on the paper. So I want this ink to really transfer over as much as possible like that, okay? All right, I don't know if I pressed hard enough on that side, but yeah, it looks okay. And then another, of the winter ash for the background. I just tell you what, I'm going to wipe this bottom portion off the trunk a little bit like that so that it looks like it's kind of going into the grass. Uh, you can also mask some parts off if you want to and it'll look like it's going into the grass as well that way. All right, so we have that like that. Now we have our areas around in here and we'll fill it in with some additional texture. We're gonna keep this one, you know, it's gonna be kept fairly simple in terms of composition. Again, we wanna focus on that background paper. You don't start off with a really super dynamic background and just cover it all up, you know what I mean? Now we've covered it all up, but these ones are the bare trees so you can see right through it. Okay, so it's not like a big solid pine tree or something like that in there, uh, which would look good on this piece too. But again, you know, I, I want to, I don't want to obscure, um, you know, Deanna's really cool um, texturing and everything that's been applied um, into the, you know, into the, the piece. Okay, so. A little bit of this rock texturing right in here. It's kind of adding a little bit of a depth to my water area like that. Textural depth, I should say. It, it, it kind of designates pond depth too, because if you can see rocks like that, it says that it's not like this, you know, 15 foot, you know, drop off right here into a, you know, a super deep 
pond or something like that. All right, now let's get some additional grass texturing over here. This would represent something nice and close to us. And these types of reeds like that, you know, when you have something like that, it definitely states that, um, you know, there's some kind of water or, you know, there's no absence of water in that area. So I like that for some added depth. Okay. Now, just because I have it right here, I'm going to go for um, some of these. I have this little brushy thing that'll go really well right there on the horizon. It's a newer stamp. Uh, the hybrid black, by the way, is a uh, it's a combination ink um, that's both dye and. <laughs> Every time I say this, uh, it sounds weird to me, but it's a water-based dye and a oil-based pigment uh, together. Somehow it works in conjunction with one another, or not in conjunction, but physically mixed together. But you think, wouldn't think oil and water mix, unless it's a water-based pigment of, you know, or I, I don't know. I don't think that exists outside of uh, the brilliance pads. Okay, masking off here and putting a little bit of bushy textures in the background. And th these are something that I'm adding in here because I can also add in some highlights and, uh, you know, something like that into the background, okay? So it's not just like a straight slope. I, I want to add a little bit of modeling within those forms like that. Yeah, let me go for another little bit right here. As I see that, I'm going to go for a little bit more depth with this little tiny tree. I'm going to put it behind there so we have one, two, three trees. So it's like there, there, there. So it's like moving off into the distance, I guess. I think that looks pretty good. In fact, I think a couple of those back there in the distance will be good. It's becoming a little bit more full. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's have some fun here. Fun with shading, okay? All right, so we have our different pencils here. I don't know if I'll need them all, but um, these two probably not uh, right here. They're pretty similar in value. So let's try basically these three right here. Okay, so the lighting is coming from upper left here. So I'm going to add in a little bit of shadow. See, this is the same darkness as this pencil right here. So I'm going to extend the shading across this area right here. So here's her colors of shadow already. So I'm going to extend them with the same, you know, basic color 
and value of that color, okay? Like that, so see that? I anchored that little, you know, uh, bank of hedges across. And the hedges there, in the darker areas of them, I'm adding a little bit of shadow to it, okay? Retaining some of the lighter areas of it too, okay? Now the horse already has its reflection down here, but see this pond's edge? I'm going to give it a little bit more definition like this, okay? So I'm going like this, okay? But then I'm trying to, in a very short span of, like, space, model it so it's going from darker to lighter here all kind of exaggerated a little bit see that right there see this transition like that okay so that's what's going on right here now i want that horse to stand out so i'm not going to make the area behind it too much darker or the textures okay but I, i'm going to add in a little bit here and there okay in the background but see how strong much stronger that edge of that pond looks there now, I don't need to do, like, the edge of the pond, I don't need to draw it in like this, okay? But what I am doing, like, the, this, this would look like an outline. It would look, you know, it wouldn't look as realistic. So what I'm doing is I'm going to shade in, like, areas like this. Okay, I, I won't have that loop right there, like that. So I'm adding in a little bit of shading like this next to it, okay? And that's at the edge of these grasses. See how there's darker areas right here? So I'm just kind of darkening them in right down here. So I just darkened it in a little bit like this into those shadow areas like that. So you can see where the shadows are on the design. So that's all I'm doing, okay? What you do is you make your darker areas on your designs darker with the way that you're coloring. That's how you can kind of approach coloring. You, you can make up whole areas and, you know, kind of you know, kind of invent whole areas to color in just on your own. It's called more like free farming, but you don't have to. You can just follow the designs. Like if this whole stamp were here, I can darken in this area down here, around up here like that, and just leave those lighter areas light, okay? So it's kind of like coloring, but instead of within, you know, real specific shapes, you know, and coloring it like this, okay? You're just looking for darker areas on these designs and just reiterating the shadow areas of them, okay? But not real super hard, you know, you're just, you know, you're varying it a little bit darker in the darker areas and then you do a little bit lighter like that, okay? So you transition as much as you can, like that. Kind of, you know, a lot of it is just getting kind of the lighter values, you know, so getting like a 5% value of this color right here is all you need in some areas. It just depends how dark the areas are, okay? So these bushes right up here, just right at the base of them, I put that kind of darker uh, kind of transition zone. In other words, it's transitioning from that bush into this grass right here, so just right on the edge, I just made it a little bit darker. And let's see. I don't think I even need this other like green, like I said. Here's black right here, okay? So you just add this into the same areas and you just get a little bit darker. But don't go, you know, with 100% black. Just kind of, you know, add a nice light shade of it like this. At first, at least. Then you can add it, you know, more if you want later on. Or if you, you know, you absolutely know you want to go dark, you could go dark right off the bat, but I like to kind of build mine up kind of gradually. All right, see that right there? Make them a little bit darker there. Kind of this meadow, this pond becomes a little bit more defined like that. 
I mean, you could take some air, you know, you can shade up there. I tend to think that it's a, it's an, you know what I mean? A pretty full statement as is. So I don't feel like I need to go up here and, you know, add in any uh, additional tone. Um, that is a kind of a white light. So I am wondering about kind of some additional kind of mist or something down here in atmospherics, but um, let's see how that, you know, let's see how it goes here. Okay, so this green should um, act as, um, you know, a pretty good highlighting value and it's certainly the color of it, but um, I could even go with some darker greens over here for darker highlights, but let's just start off with this one first, okay. Now it's a little bit different for me using um, this pen over these pre-printed papers because this um, ink really isn't merging with any of the ink underneath it. You know, this printer's ink I'm talking about for the paper. So I'm not sure what this highlight is going to look like when it dries. I don't know if it's going to be look a little bit lighter, I mean, or as light as it does when I first add it on, or if it's going to dry darker like it does, you know, when I'm stamping into exposed inks and things that I just laid down um, with these pen, pens here. And I'm saying that because when you add this down here, you can kind of see those additions right in there, but as it dries, you know, it usually dries darker than what it looks like when it's, than when it's wet for some reason. Let me get this flowing a little bit better. I have it seems like it's clogged with something. I might have used it over the top of, you know, speaking of media, if you use your pens like in a, like over pigment ink or something like that, sometimes some of it goes up in the tip. So you just, you saw how it was working right there. Now it's flowing very nicely. So just get it flowing. Don't pogo stick and poke it, poke it, poke it and smash the tip down. Okay, that's just gonna close off the tip more. So just kind of scribble it around. You know, you can depress the tip a little bit, you know, to get the ink flowing if that was the problem. See, this is where the lit area is. So I'm not gonna have like too many highlights over here because there's no lighting over here, okay? But I do have some of it kind of creeping over a little bit ever so slightly. Kind of bringing the uh, the lawn here to life. <laughs> it's like a little meadowy area. That was yellow, or it looks yellow. It's yellow green, and we'll use some of the white here. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's a white as opposed to like a warm pale yellow. So. I can use some of this white. If the white is like whiter than kind of the lightest area, sometimes it stands out a little bit um, obtrusively. So I wouldn't, you know, add that too much in that case. But since I think she's retained some of the white, we can have some white reflective light in here. And I'll put a few more of those water sparkles in there. Like that, like that. It's like shimmering, kind of brings the uh, scene to life a little bit in that area. <sighs> this wouldn't be bad having these little kind of fireflies in here. I think I'm gonna do that. This area in here gets really dark, okay? And I like to kind of bring 
certain areas to life a little bit more in illumination but sometimes it doesn't really make sense so in this case you know you can say okay well you know you want a little bit more light in that area then here's these little dancing little fireflies in you know the area here so i make my dots a little bit larger right up here and those ones are a little bit smaller i mean it doesn't have to be so formal but let's do that and then let's add in a little bit of white pigment ink So it's like the sun is in here, but um, we can add in other kind of light sources into the scene, so to speak. Just really light applications, okay? So you, the biggest uh, thing is, is that um, you don't have too much ink on your, in this case, cotton swab. And then you build up that glow through um, a repetition of taps like that, okay? That might be a little bit too much, okay? But we'll see. See those little glowing little specks in the background? Now this is a little bit too much in the foreground. Let's remove some of the glow off of a couple of these. I think it looks pretty good right there. Well, let me see, a little bit less here. I'm just kind of, I'm wiping it off. I, I just, this Kleenex is not the side that that white ink on it. I think it looks pretty decent though. This is really standing out. <laughs> this is a really dark area here, so maybe I applied a little bit too much. So I'm just kind of wiping some of it off right here. But I think that has about the right glow now. Um, little fireflies. I'll try to put a little bit of green on some of these fireflies too. Maybe maybe the ones in the foreground. I'll put a little touch of green into it for the lightning bug experts out there. I'll give you a little bit of that greenish glow. I can't do it. I can't put a dot down with the green and then put the white over it because I can't really see that interior glow as much with the green, so if you're gonna do it, put a white one down, put the glow on, and then just go over the top of it with another little dot of, uh, uh, you know, the green ink, be it a gel pen or paint pen, whatever you happen to be using. Okay, let me see if I can get a touch of, uh, kind of some foggy atmospherics into this scene. It might stand out a little bit in here because I didn't, there's no white down here, you know, except for the my little dots, okay? So sometimes this might kind of stand out a little bit more, too much um, visually, so and I will see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to add some of it around this, on this tree uh, top into some of these branches, maybe. So you can see that kind of glowing a little bit more. About like so, and then let's add a little bit of it. Let's add a little bit in the background in here. Let me grab a paper towel here and I'm gonna add some kind of right back in here. And again, I'm kind of doing this slowly to get the feel of it, uh, you know. It'll kind of wipe off if I don't like it, but uh, it's better just to add it in nice and slowly so you can kind of see it forming. See that white right there really stands out um, right there. So I'm gonna wipe some of it off a little bit and I'll see if I can get a little gist of it like right down in there. Um, let's add it up couple other spots and let's see I 
All right, so it's, it's kind of a little bit of mist right in there. And let's try it right here. Or, ooh, around the water's edge like that. That's like way too much white ink on my uh, cotton ball. So I'll use kind of a little bit of a lighter touch. I'll put it right at the base of the that horse, kind of in between its, around its legs and in the uh, shadow area maybe. It's kind of like the water's edge is where you'd usually see it, or, you know, it could be coming off the water, too. Let's try it like that. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It's just like a little mellow kind of mist in there. I'm applying this really, really thin, so it's, I'm using like a really dry um, cotton ball here. All right, so see that? How's that for kind of some atmospherics in there? I think that little bit down there and little bit right in there, I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, I wasn't, I, I didn't want to add too much because uh, you know, I, I didn't want it to look obtrusive or something like that, but I think it looks pretty decent. Again, I missed a couple of these old branches in here, so I'm just going to draw them in with a little pen here. All right, there we go. So about that, um, let's see. It's not quite, it's not dusk. I don't know what time that is. It's, it looks around, it's almost not quite sunset. Um, I don't know what time of day it is. The dramatic, whatever time of day it is, it's like one of the more dramatic times of day though. <laughs> so, um, yeah. We'll call it um, the quiet lights on the meadow or something like that. But I think it's a pretty fun, uh, it's, it was definitely fun to use uh, Deanna's uh, background here. I have a lot of other ones, you know, to use and, uh, you know, I'll have to come up with uh, some different uh, scenarios for them. Um, but um, there's a lot to choose from and a lot of different color uh, schemes. And uh, I believe she does them most primarily in pan pastels. There might be some mixed media going on on some of these, but um, uh, fun stuff. I might even try some, um, if I have a horizontal here, I think I'm gonna try some um, reflection cards with them. So uh, they should be really fun. So, you know, if you like one of these pieces um, or several, you know, several of them, then when you throw that reflection of them underneath it, it's like you're getting double whatever the impact or, you know, the double the, uh, um, the quality of the piece um, reflected down in that area below. So um, that's definitely something that I'd want to do with some of her pieces. Okay, so anyways, uh, Deanna's Ink Inspirations, uh, Deanna's Ink Inspirations on uh, her YouTube channel, check them out. And you can see her um, developing how she, um, these are pan pastels, but they call them, um, you know, like they're paints, um, they're like a painting style. So um, like in college, we learned that pastels were a form of painting. Um, you're just using those raw pigments and you are in a different form, a different um, delivery for them. But you can see how she develops these uh, cool looking skies and how she gets those little like highlights and things like that um you know within those final touches and things like that so and then she's a stamper of course so um she really knows um and can visualize um kind of a good foundation for other things to go on top of it so it's not just skies for sky's sake although they look great for that too but um 
she's visualizing them for the uh, for us, the stamper, um, and helping us um, get to a certain kind of a dramatic end result um, through a faster means. <laughs> so on a scene like this one, you know, we're talking about a half an hour instead of, uh, you know, us having to do that whole sky if we don't have the time to do it. Or, you know, whatever the means, you know, by which to do it uh, as far as the skills and utilizing um, certain types of media to create it. Um, it's just a really fast way to do it. And like I said, it kind of injects a different um, consideration into the beginning of these projects because you have to think about how you're going to uh, use these um, different scenarios based around primarily the value ranges in areas of them and working around it into your, um, you know, your, your, your visual scenarios, your compositions, your stamp compositions. All right, so thanks to Deanna and thanks to all of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the piece. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. And thanks as always for tuning in to the uh, channel.